Hi everyone, welcome to Intabi in a Books, a channel where I, Intabi, talk about all my books and all my bookish things. Today I am talking with you through my book trolley. I have finally gave them to the bookstagram, booktube pressure, and I got myself a trolley. I'm really excited about it because before this I would usually I have one bookshelf. Um, it's a shelf that I brought with me from home. I have one bookshelf and it's in the in this area, the living area, which I don't spend a lot of time in. I spend a lot more time in my work room because I work 15 hour days or 14 hour days, whatever. Um, so I spend a lot of time in there and I just wanted to have my books with me so that I could read them when I was on a break or just so I can look at them. Because I am vain like that and I want to see pretty things around me while I work. I put it together the other day and I thought that I was going to take you through it the same day but I underestimated how tired I am at the end of a work day so after about 30 minutes of putting it together deciding where the books are going to go and then deciding where the books are going to go again and redoing this cart a few times. I realized that I, I just didn't have the capacity to do it, but I'm doing it today. I'm really happy to be doing it today because it means that I get to wear my very bright sweater that I'm very excited about. The weather changed here in London. It was really warm last week and then this week it's like the spring never happened and it was just all a scam. Um, but it's fine, we get to wear cozy clothes for a bit longer. I'm going to start at the top um, and because I want everyone to see how pretty the books are, I will be taking them down, talking about them, then putting back them up because that's just the kind of person I am. So let's get into that part of the video. Starting with the books at the top shelf, um, the first book that I have that you actually can't see because it's on the back is The Invention of Hugo Cabaret by Brian Selznick. I know a little about this book, but I am really excited to read it at some point this year because one of the things I wanted to do was get into some graphic novels or graphic books and this book looks very thick and it probably is. I think it's a middle grade book, but I'm really excited to read a book with pictures. I have another one of his books which is on the shelf so I'll be talking about that one as well but I'm really excited to get into this one at some point this year. The next book which you can see is Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. Uh, I have a video talking about what Chain of Gold means for me. I am really excited to get into this. I think I am putting it off for when I know that I have no work stress and I don't have to think about work while I'm reading. That will probably never happen, but that's what I'm saving um, Chain of Iron for. The next book is The Gold Diggers by Suunyati. I'm really excited to read this one. Suunyati is a Zimbabwean writer who lives in Johannesburg. And this, per my understanding, is a book about people who are journeying from Zimbabwe into South Africa uh, in a minibus taxi. And we just get to see the different reasons why people are on the trip, why people are moving from, from Zimbabwe. So I'm really excited to get into this one at some point. Uh, the next book is Amari and the Night Brothers. Amari and the Night Brothers, per my understanding, is a book about a young girl whose brother gets kidnapped. That's as much as I know about it. It's a really beautiful cover. I mean, the, the end pages are also glitter, which is very fun for me because I love stuff like that. Um, so what encouraged me to get this book was the fact that I really enjoyed um, The House in the Cerulean Sea. And I realized that I need to read more middle grade books because I really like middle grade books. I didn't even know middle grade books was a thing. So I'm really excited to read that one. The next book is City of Brass by S.H. Chakrabarti. This is my first reread of 2021. I read the series in 2020 and I loved it so much. I still think about Ali Zaid up until this day. The characters were so phenomenal in this book. Rereading and re-listening to it right now and the dialogue is just impeccable. What S.A. Chakrabarti did with this is just, it's phenomenal. So I'm rereading this one right now, really enjoying it again. The next book is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I don't know much about this book except that one of my favorite booktubers, Emmy, 
gave this five stars it was her first five star read of the year and i'm really excited to get into this at some point probably after amari and the knight brothers the next book that i have is the beginning of the world in the middle of the night by jen campbell i spoke about this in my disability visibility readathon um video and i really am getting interested in, in reading this because i love the colors that are on the cover and i really love jen's work i love her videos so i'm really excited to get into this she posted something the other day which was a, sh a piece of her short story writing and i read that and i really enjoyed it so i'm really excited to read this one also needs to be read in april at some point the next book that i have is get a life chloe brown i read one page of this so far um i would really love to read it i saw that olivia over at olivia's catastrophe also read it and she enjoyed it so i'm really excited to get it into this one i don't know this will probably be something that i read a few days before april is over just to say that i read it before april was over um, but i'm really excited to read this one uh kindred started reading kindred i kindred brought back some bad habits for me i'm now back to bending my books in order to, to bookmark how far I am but I started reading Kindred obviously Octavia E. Butler please check out my video talking about Parable of the Soa I can't wait to talk about this one as well um not a book but a little plant yeah that's just that I have this tiny plant I don't know what it is I'm not good at plants I just like pretty things and I don't really pay attention to what they are moving on to my second shelf the first book here is His Only Wife by Peace Adomedi. I, 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 I don't think I said that correctly, so I'm, I'm really sorry. I was really excited before I got this book um, when I ordered it, and then it came. I read the first few pages, and I thought, this is probably not my kind of book, and I should have had the foresight to realize that. But I'm so excited to read it, and if i don't enjoy it i will try my best not to make any notes inside the book and i'll just i'll just give it away um let's just hope the book does surprise me and i'm wrong and i actually do enjoy it but the first few pages i was like this is not my vibe the second book that i have here is how beautiful we were which is one of my anticipated books coming out in 2020 i spoke about this in my black booktuber tag really excited it's a book about a village in Africa, West Africa, I believe, where uh, a company has come in and taken hold of their minerals, mainly oil, and now everybody in the village is just falling sick uh, as a result of the runoff, I'm guessing. Um, I started reading it, but, you know, I haven't been able to read properly in the past few weeks. I've just had so many deadlines, but I'm really excited to read this one. The next book is Love in Color by Bulu Babalola. This one is apparently love stories retold within an African context. This one I know I'm reading in May because I'm buddy reading it with someone. But I love the cover. I did a books and looks of it on Instagram. I don't really do a lot of books and looks, but this one was... I figured I could do this because I have a head wrap and I'm brown, so why not? It was a really fun thing to do. Um, the next one was Wizard of the Crow, is Wizard of the Crow by Ngugi Watongo. This one I started reading as well, and I'm really I was really enjoying it. It's just that it was just too chunky for me to commit to in the past two months. But I'm really excited to read this one. I think it'll also be a May read when things feel a bit more settled. The next book that I have is Kintu by Jennifer Nasumbuga Makumbi. I think this is a Ugandan author and I'm really excited to get into it. You know, I, I have had my eye on this one for quite some time, but I think, I don't know, sometimes some books really do terrify me because not because i'm scared i won't like it but because i'm like what if i just don't have the range you know to process everything that's in that book and this is one of those books i do have one of her other books which is a girl is a body of water i think i wanted to read kintu first because i want to see how she progressed as a writer but i'm really excited about that one as well i think it's the second half of the year type of book um because i need to finish kintu first which i'm hoping to read in may the next book that i have i won't take down but it's the tea dragon society which is one that i also spoke about in my disability readathon and then we have a cute little fern again and then i have 
Burn Sugar by Avni Doshi. This one I started reading, I got to page 30. The first, the, the introduction, like the first line, the first paragraph of this book is phenomenal. It, it just really just, it just really just catches your eye. And I, I was so overwhelmed by how good this book was, I put it down. I know that sounds like I'm just saying that, like, oh, she's lying. How can you be overwhelmed by a good book? But that happens to me quite often where I start reading something and I'm like, I don't think I'm, I'm ready to hear this. So this book I'm really excited to read. Um, I think it was also just recently long listed or short listed for a prize. I really need to do better at understanding what long list and short list means. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to get into this one at some point. I saw that they have an audio version in the library. I have reserved that and as soon as I can do a read and listen combo, which I really do enjoy, I will definitely finish this one. The next book is They Called Me Queer, compiled by Kim Van Bochel and Kelly Eve Guopman. This is a South African anthology written about what it is the queer experience in South Africa and I'm really excited to get into this one at some point this year. I've been wanting to read this last year I think at some point I even had a sample of it on my Kindle and I just never read it but this year definitely making it a plan. The next book which are the books that I use <laughs> to plop up my plants. I have STEM. It's an autistic anthology edited by Lizzie Huxley Jones. I'm reading it as part of the readathon as well. Haven't started it, but I know that I will take take it down when I do decide to sit down. The next book is The Icarus Girl. I don't know much about this, but hey, it's Shay, who is one of my favorite uh, booktubers as well. Spoke about it in her black booktuber tag, and I just, it, she made it sound incredible and I've wanted to read it since then so I just I just got a copy. The next book is Parable of the Sower. I have this on my shelf because it's right on top of Parable of the Talents. So my plan is to read Parable of the Talents and then to go through both of them in a way uh, through my notes and my highlights and see what my feelings are comparing the two. How I think Lauren's character remained um, true to the Lauren that I met in Parable of the Sower. Started reading Parable of the Talents. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but there is one thing that bothered me about Parable of the Sower, which is making Parable of the Talents hard for me to really get into. But I am I'm, I'm planning on reading all of these by June. We've done one, two, and now to the third one. The third shelf is supposed to be mostly my non-fiction shelf. Um, but it's not <laughs> because I guess I'm not a big non-fiction reader but the books that I've put on here I'm really excited to read starting with of course Beauty of the Heart by Charlotte Manya Like I feel like I mentioned this book in every single video so I'm not even gonna get into what it's about yet yeah, check out one of the places where I've talked about it really excited about this book to read it at some point I think it might be a May read. The next book is 491 Days, um, which is a book about Mama Winnie Matikizela Mandela. Really, really, really want to read this. Um, I just need the bravery that I think I will require in order to read it. I am not very good at reading painful books by South Africans because I grew up in South Africa. I was raised by a grandmother and a grandfather. I had I heard the stories and yeah reading them is a whole other topic but I, I really want to read that one. The next book, this one I don't expect I'll finish um, because it's a, it's a collection of stories, histories, just interesting things about Johannesburg. I um I lived in Johannesburg before I moved to London and I love Johannesburg. I'm not like those people who thinks I who don't love Johannesburg because of faulting it for whatever reasons people don't like it for. I love everything about Johannesburg. I think it's an incredible city. It has so much history and it has so many people from all walks of life. I think Johannesburg is similar to a lot of the other big cities in the world. It's, it's the same in that everybody who sort of moves to Johannesburg is there because they have some sort of dream or they, they want to realize something. They want to be more than they were ever told they could be. I'm sure if you're watching this and you live in other parts of South Africa, you think, well, I live here and I think this the same thing. So I agree. I think so too. 
you can live wherever you want and still have the ambition that I am talking about in Johannesburg. It's just, for me, I feel like there's a different atmosphere and a different feeling. And it's also a melting pot of different cultures. So I, I really love that. I think I'm very interested in different people coming together and despite their differences, working and moving along and chugging along with life. I am not a big person who believes in the fact that we need to stick to our own or we need to see each other as different and not collaborate. I'm a big collaborator. I want you to see that I'm different, just like I want to see that you're different. And then I want us to move on and not say that, you know, because I'm different, we're never going to talk about your difference. I want us to talk about our differences. I want us. To, I want you to tell me what this means in your language, and I want to tell you what it means in my language. And I want us to then say, okay, what is the common language that we're going to find where we can communicate in a way that is the most effective for the both of us while staying true to who we are. So I am really excited to read this, and I hope it's about that. I've already projected so much onto this poor book, but that is basically what I feel about Johannesburg, what I love about Johannesburg, and what I miss about Johannesburg. Everybody from everywhere coming together and saying... Let's try and make some dreams come true. And I'm really excited to read this one. The next book that I want to read, uh, it's the address book by Deidre Moss. It's a book about what your street address says about you in the world. And I'm really excited to read this because I think there's so many things we take for granted as humans. Um, for whatever reason, um, it might be because you've never had to think about them. But I think about my home village in the northwest where there are no street addresses once you get off the main road and you start walking up. I don't even think I've ever seen a house address on my grandparents' house. Like, I have no idea what number it is. Does, do they have a number? Do, do they even, is they even mail? Like, <laughs> things as simple as that. And then you think of all the implications of what it means when you don't have mail. Um, and you, you don't have an address. So I really am excited to read this book. I I will make time for it. It will also be another one that I read before July. So by the way, this cart is supposed to be all the books that I plan to read before July. Um, by read, I mean if I don't like one of them. I'm eyeing his only wife when I say that. If I don't like one of them, I will just put it aside and accept that that book will not get read. Because I'm not enjoying it, I'm not going to force myself to read a book that I don't enjoy. But the plan is to at least make it through all of these or see what they're about by then. The next book is Eloquent Rage by Dr. Brittany Kuba. I started reading this one this week and it's already hitting some points. Um, I wrote here somewhere that it's the main thing that I'm going to have to do in order to really digest this book is try and remove it from a very the American lens that Dr. Cooper wrote in, which is understandable. I mean, she is, an, she is an American, so of course the book is going to be from that angle. But I'm really excited to read this one. This was rec recommended to me by my therapist, so really excited to read this one. Um, the next book is um, To My Children's Children, which is a biography by Sindhuwe Magona. I think Dr. Sindhuwe Magona is actually more accurate. Really excited to read this. I have always known that she's written biographies and it's the same with the Winnie Mandela biography that I always think, man, we've had these stories. I can't read about them. But I think it's time, you know, getting older, getting braver. Um, and I really am planning on reading this one. I think I'm gonna read this one probably at the beginning of May or at some point in April. The next book is going to be a reread for me. That is, Is Everyone Hang Out Without Me and Other Concerns by Mindy Kaling. I love Mindy Kaling. I think she is hilarious. I loved Kelly Kapoor on The Office US. I haven't watched The Office UK uh, because I prefer the US one because that's the one I found first and that is that on that. Um, and I really loved her. I think she's an incredible writer. I know some of the episodes that she wrote there were really funny. I really enjoyed this one. I read it. I read it when I was in university. And back then, I, I didn't own the book. So I just got the, the physical book. And I remember sitting on the bus and howling. Because I think I had just written a terrible test. And I was on the bus and I started reading this. And I was howling. And I was sitting next to a guy who said to me, well, maybe that's not a book. Why is the title so long? And you know when you're just deliriously laughing because you're tired and something is funny and you don't know what the hell is going on? And that's the memory that I have of this book. After reading this, I loved it so much. I read other books by female comedians. I read Tina Fey's Bossy Pants. 
I read Amy Poehler's Yes Please. That one I think I shouldn't have read so soon after Bossy Fans because I do want to reread it and I remember really loving the structure because there's pictures in the book. She just wrote it in a very interesting way. I remember there was a there was a part where she writes about going through divorce and I think the title is called Everybody Needs to Stop Buying More Toys. So I think Amy Poehler is a, is a really funny writer too. So I'll probably pick that one up once I'm done with Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me. This is the book of her, this is her book that I prefer. I've read the other one as well, but this one I just really love. So I just had to get myself a copy and I put it on my cart. The next two books, the two books in the Brown series, Sister series. Yeah, I think everything that has been said about these has been said. I don't know much about them because I didn't read the first one. But I'm excited, you know. I get excited very easily. I'm a pretty easy breezy kind of girl, going girl. The next book is <laughs> Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. So, um, Open Water, I think I started it, yeah. So this is when I was... See, I struggle with using bookmarks. I, I got to page nine and so this book was recommended to me when I bought Transcendent Kingdom and I think I was trigger happy because I didn't read anything about it and I just bought it. But I started reading it and I am not sure. I just, the writing is just, again, I'm on page nine so I need to give it a better chance. It is a pretty short book. And but this is also going to be one that I have to read and not 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 make any notes in it because it might be one that I don't keep. I, I don't know. I just have a feeling about that book. I don't want to say more because then it's going to look like I'm bashing a book without even giving it a chance. The next book is this chunky one. This is a June read. You know, I've even decided that in June, I'm just going to read this book. I'm not going to read anything else because this book is too big. It is The Count of Monte Cristo by... Alexandra Duma. I really want to read this like really bad. <laughs> I think some of my favorite booktubers have talked about this. I really want to read it but it's so big. How do you recommend that I get through it? It's so big. I mean the writing is relatively fine. It's not that the font isn't that bad. Like it's not a smallest legend born. Uh, but I really want to read this so it's on my shelf I should probably move it to the top and remove it from the bottom so that it just stares at me every day and makes me feel bad The next book is So Long a Letter by Maria Mabá uh, So Maria Mabá is a Senegalese writer and this is um, an African classic book it's called it's in the African writer series and I'm really excited to read this a lot of people who've read it have loved it and I do want to read a classic a month this year because I want to read more classics just so I can see what used to be like a good book back then whether or not it holds up um, you know I, I talked about this in my award ceremony about how I think books need to be dissected regardless of whether they're classics or not and I would really love to read this one it's an African classic and I don't think we have enough of those so I'm really excited to read this one at some point the next book I actually did read but I want to reread it because it's quite small. It's uh, it's teaching my mother how to give birth by Wasan Shire. I uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but she is a poet, and I've I've seen a lot of her poetry going around, and I've enjoyed it. So I got her book, read her book, but I wasn't reading. I wasn't reading it because it, it there are very little marks in here and I am a marker of books so I'm really excited about this. I also have a new book annotating system which I am applying to what I'm currently reading and I'd really like to talk about it once I figure out whether or not it works. Um, so yeah this one I should probably move up because it needs to be read this month. Um, the next book is the selective poems of Nikki Giovanni. I started reading this as you can see. Um, so I am on a mission to read a poem a month. It doesn't matter how I read it, where I read it. Sometimes I wake up and I think, hey, who's that poet I've once heard of? Let me Google their poetry and read a poem if it's available. Um, and I've been really enjoying this. I've also been reading Rilke's um, Letters to a Young Poet. I'm gonna go get it and put it on my shelf. Reina Maria Rilke's Letters to a Young Poet. I read this and I really enjoyed it and I would I would love to reread it so I'm just gonna add it onto my cart. But back to Nikki Giovanni. I've been reading her poetry. I've enjoyed her poetry so far. Um, I've made notes so I know that I'm going to keep this book forever. 
uh, Nikki Giovanni is a legend and I really love this cover I think she looks she looks so great uh, I love me a billowy top so love this um, the last book on my cot which I never thought I would get to the end is Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick another one that has some pictures I believe one of the characters in this book is deaf and the pictures are to symbolize how they see the world that they move through I'm really excited to get into more books with pictures this year so I'm really excited to read Wonderstruck at some point I think what I'll do is I'll add more books that I plan to reread this year because those are really missing and if I don't see them they won't get read um, but yeah that was my TBR trolley tour. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all the support I've received. Uh, I've met over 400 subscribers and I'm really grateful and really appreciative of that. Thank you for spending your time with me. Um, and I'll see you in my next video. And as usual, remember to be kinder than you think is necessary. Bye.